Wow, you know, having been a party clown of the rich and famous for over 30 years, I met some real schmucks. First time I met Donald Trump was at the opening of his home and castle, Trump Tower. At the time, before he built his 58-story phallus, people said, you can't tell down the Bonwood Tower building, it's a New York landmark. Trump had one word for them, wrong. <laughs> then he had some other words, I'm gonna go completely demolish that loser. What he replaced it with was the perfect representation of Trump himself. An unwelcoming behemoth, cold as the steel bones that hold it upright, yet as fragile as the glass skin that it's wrapped in. So it's opening night, and I'm standing at the front door, positioned to meet the guests. The press is everywhere. I'm dressed in my signature costume, the human television, a newsman with a two-dimensional TV screen attached to his body. So what pulls this embarrassingly over-elongated limo? <laughs> The smaller the hands, the longer the limo, I guess. <laughs> and out steps the Donald and wife number one, a.k.a. Ivana. They're looking very, well, trumped up. I stick out my fake microphone and say, Welcome to the grand opening gala of Trump Tower. Would you like to say something to the folks at home? Trump looks me up and down. Remember, my costume makes me look like I'm on TV from the waist up. Yet I'm acting as if I'm a reporter interviewing him. Trump is thrown by the incon incongruity. I guess an appreciation of irony is not part of his excellent temperament. <laughs> I can see his mind working. It's not a pretty sight. <laughs> Am I supposed to watch this guy on TV or pretend that I'm on TV with him? Hey, that would be cool. And I'd love, if I had my own TV show, I could pretend to fire people. <laughs> I'd like to fire this loser right now. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so then he decides, though, to, um, uh, to play along with me. Um, he says, I'd like to say to everyone, come to Trump Tower for shopping like you've never seen. We've got tremendous stores, not lightweight stores, bigly stores. We're open from 10 to 8. We're shopping on all five levels. Trump's always been a master of the language. So the party gets going and everybody's dancing. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot the Donald talking to another big guy. It's Penthouse Magazine publisher Bob Guccione. The Gooch. Their body language is getting all alpha male aggressive. It looks as if the Donald's gonna bump the Gooch with his chest. I lip-read their conversation. My wife's breasts are bigger than your wife's. Oh yeah? My wife's breasts are bigger than yours. Oh yeah? Well, at least my wife's breasts are real. Yeah, real saggy. Hey, watch it or I'll, uh, I'll tell the media about your wife's sex video. How'd you know about that? <laughs> I didn't, it was just a guess. <laughs> you would love it. Yeah, I bet it's tremendous. Uh, now, for the uninitiated, the gooch is actually slang for the area between the testicles and the anus. And speaking of the male genitalia, who comes over to talk to me but the penthouse pent of the year? She's being very playful, touching the dials on my TV costume. She says, if you let me play with your knobs, I'll let you play with mine. Then it dawns on me that she's stoned out of her centerfold mind. <laughs> but before I can excuse myself, she's dragging me onto the dance floor. So wasted that she's grabbing my TV costume and trying to stay upright. <laughs> oh God, 30 seconds ago when an adolescent fantasy seemed to be coming true, but now on a dime, the smoky saxophone in my head is, is now turned into a blaring car along voice. Step away from the pet. Step away from the pet. What if she pukes on me? What if her bodybuilder boyfriend sees me and cancels my series? And in this waking nightmare, I hallucinate the bodybuilder coming toward us. Magically, magically, he morphs into Donald Trump, who then swoops in and catches the girl just before she falls and helps her stagger off the dance floor. For one very small moment, I think, Trump's a pretty classy guy after all. Then, in my mind, I see him heading to the door with Miss Penthouse. Was Trump taking her out to help her get a taxi? <laughs> he hears my thoughts and turns to me and says, Wrong! When I snap out of my fever dream, I'm still stumble dancing with the pet of the year, who now seems much less appealing with her droopy Courtney Loves Heroin eyelids. Uh, I'll tell her it's time that, uh, I tell her it's time for the TV to take a commercial break. Then I peel away and dash for the dressing room in the safety of my next costume character, America's favorite dad, Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs>